In the Zoom for our learning community today, we're talking about lettering in Illustrator. And this is just one of the fun things that I'm I'm doing a demonstration on today, which is this hand done lettering here that has a drop shadow. And the drop shadow is applied in the appearance panel using a layer effect. And the cool thing about this is that when you draw on a layer that has an effect, that effect is applied to everything on that layer as you draw it. So you can see I'm drawing a red line here. And when I release, I get that drop shadow that I have. And I'm drawing this with a, with a mouse. I'm not sure why I'm doing that because I do have a tablet right here. All right, so let's take a look at how you do this. All right, so here I am in another file and I'm gonna break this down and show you how I did this. Um, so on this layer, if we look at this in um, outline mode, command or control Y, I can see those are just very simple paths. We're not even seeing the drop shadow. It's because it's been created by this effect in the appearance panel. And there's a clue here in the layers panel. We can see that darkened target there means that there's a complex appearance applied. And in this case, it's applied to the layer. Let me go ahead and select one of these layers, uh, one of these letters, and we'll look at it in the appearance panel. So you can see with that one stroke selected there, right here, it says path. Um, it's yellow. It's a, got a five point round brush on it. And above at the very top of the appearance panel, we can see there is a layer effect applied. You can even see here, it's got FX next to it. So if I click on this, it takes me into inside of that layer effect that's applied to the layer. And looking here, this is where, you know, that stacking order in the appearance panel becomes really important. So right here, I have this line here that is the contents and everything, the contents means, you know, everything that's on this layer. So in this case, all of these yellow strokes, these pink strokes here, and below that is where this um, stroke is happening and the drop shadow effect. So let's turn off these two here so you can just see. Here's everything without the effect. And then below the contents, I have a 10 point stroke applied. So that's giving you sort of that thickness outside of the colored stroke. And then the transform effect is what's creating that drop shadow. And that's doing that by making copies of that black stroke and then offsetting them um, just a little bit at a time with each copy. So if I open up this transform effect here, we can really see that. I'll move this panel over here so it's a little easier to see. Um, so what we have is we've got transform objects selected and then we have 15 copies. So as I lower the number of copies, you're gonna see uh, that you know drop shadow kind of shrink there and as I add more copies it gets deeper and deeper like that so let's go down back down to 15 and then it's happening uh, using this uh, every time when uh, the transform effect makes that copy it moves it horizontally by one point and vertically by negative one point so if I were to move this up to two points you can see how it moves horizontally even farther with each copy. I'm gonna go back to one point. And then if I go down to vertical, you know, and I start with positive numbers, <laughs> the drop shadow goes down and with a negative number it goes up. So you can play with this to your heart's content and, and dial in exactly the kind of drop shadow that you want. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel, but that's how that is happening. Now to apply it to a layer, that's also, um, another thing that you need to be aware of. So let's go ahead and I'll make a new layer here and uh, layer three. And if I grab, you know, the same brush from before, I'm just clicking on that and I draw on this layer right now, no drop shadow. Okay, so we're gonna sort of start from scratch here to apply this. So I've got layer three here. Main thing that I need to do is click on this target to target that appearance to select um, the layers appearance and apply it. So then I'm going to go over to the appearance panel here and you can see same as before, we've got layer at the top. So we're working on the layer appearance. We've got contents right here. And then below that, I want to add a stroke. So I'm going to click on the add a stroke button. Let me shrink this up so you can actually see that button there when I click on it. Um, looks like I added two strokes. So I'm going to do that. And then let's see, this one needs to be 10 points. 
okay? And currently it's above the contents here. So let me take this selected and just drag it. You can see just like in the layers panel, you can drag it like that. So now it is behind that uh, stroke or the contents of this layer. And then I'm going to add an effect to this. So I'm going to select this stroke, click on the FX button, distort and transform, and then choose transform. And then here, I just want to do those settings just like I did it before, one point and negative one point for the movement, and then, or move, <laughs> and then under copies, um, you can just, you know, add the number of copies you want. I'll do 15 in this case, just like before, and click OK. And so now what I have is a layer effect here. It is applied to layer three, and so I can continuously draw and have that same thing happening. Now let's go ahead and just make this a little different. Um, let me go ahead and target that um, appearance, go into the appearance panel, and here I'll just change the color of that shadow to blue so we can you know, tell the difference here. And then I can back up, and I'm still drawing with my mouse, so I'm going to get my trusty, um, my trusty tablet open, and it looks like I've got the same stroke color chosen. So let me go back to a nice yellow stroke, and I'm doing this in pieces, you know, so I don't have, um, you know, any kind of weirdness going on in the corners. I'll show you how this happens. So when you work with this drop shadow here, what happens sometimes is if you draw a corner, you'll see that those copies start w going in, in the wrong direction or overlapping each other and they're showing this extra thing out here. So what I do in this case is I just cut those line segments apart. So I'm going to come here and grab C for cut. That's the shortcut for the scissors tool. And then when you click on that anchor point, um, now what I have is instead of having that sharp corner there, I just have two separate segments and then the drop shadow works as it should. So if you draw like this and you come through and you find any of that weird um, stuff happening, you can just cut those strokes apart like this. And then just continue having fun drawing. I'm just drawing these those pieces separate like that. I just love how this works. All right, so I hope you have fun with that. And I've got one more thing to show you. Now let's take a look at how to expand this artwork. Because like I showed you before in outline mode, this is just some very simple strokes and all of the cool drop shadow is happening because of an effect. And if I actually want that artwork where I can edit it, I'm gonna need to expand that. And so what I recommend doing is, as I've done here, separate this onto different layers. So if you want some of your art to, to maintain, uh, that shadow effect, like this original art that I have over here, make sure it's on a separate layer and that the art that you're expanding is on a separate layer, of course, with that um, appearance applied to it, to the layer. All right, so now let's go ahead and expand it. So I'm gonna select all of this art here, and then I'm gonna go up to Object and Expand Appearance. All right, so when I click on this, it's gonna expand this effect here, and notice in the layers panel, that target is no longer darkened. So there is no longer an effect applied to this layer. And that's why I suggest, you know, separating the layer by layer, the parts that you want to keep live and the parts that you want to expand, because once you do that expand appearance, it's going to affect the whole layer. All right, so I've expanded it, and what we have here are really just stacked up. Those individual stroke copies that we saw in the transform effect are now individual strokes. But that's not what I want. I really want these to be all expanded, and they're in a group here. So let me go ahead and expand these again. Object, expand, and in this case, I want to expand um, fill and stroke is fine to have checked here. I just am after getting those strokes expanded. Um, and let's see what we have here. If I get my white arrow out, you can see, if I zoom in, you know, that is a shape there. It's no longer a stroke. In fact, when I look at it and then I look down here in the lower corner here, I can see that's a fill. 
Um, let's see, did I expand the yellow too? Yes, the yellow is also a fill. So you can select individual parts of this, maybe expand all the blue and keep the yellow still as you know a stroke with a stroke weight on it. But in this case, everything here is made into shape. So that's great. In this case, what I wanna do actually is uh, I wanna use my magic wand tool and just select the blue. And I'm only gonna affect the blue when I use um, the pathfinder here and just unite all of that into one shape. So we can see here now the drop shadow, it's all grouped with the yellow, but let's take this out. The drop shadow is separate um, and it's all merged where it was all a lot of lines before. Now it's totally merged and that just simplifies the whole thing. So it's a multi-step process to expand the art when you've started from a layer effect. Uh, so you just kind of got to pay attention to everything. Layer effects can be a little confusing or a little tricky, but as long as you pay attention to the stacking order of things and you really look at what you have by going into outline mode and selecting things and seeing what it says up here or at the top of the appearance panel, you'll figure it out. So I hope I've done a good job of explaining that to you and that you have fun with this lettering. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator online here on my YouTube channel and in my learning community at lauracoylecreative.com. So I hope you'll come and check that out. And thank you so much for watching.